Hello and welcome back to the Florida Aviation Network. I'm Ben Coleman, one of your many hosts for the network. And we're here on the 44th annual Sun and Fun International Convention and Fly-In, coming to you live and in the clear here from the Florida Air Museum. And if you have not been here, it's, it's a lot of neat little stuff to look at. You've got the Howard Hughes uh, exhibit here, if, and uh, that's something that's very, very unique. It's unique. There's no other place in the world that's, that's got it. And uh, there's another place uh, that's unique is here because we have something that's no other place other in the world other than John Rathmill. John. Hi. Hey, you welcome. <laughs> John uh, happens to be with an aircraft company, and it's one of the uh, new and upcoming aircraft companies. It hasn't been in existence too long, and he knows a little bit about this uh, aircraft that you would really enjoy hearing about, and I'm going to pull as much information, extract it out of him as much as we can. He's a little shy and timid, but uh, we're going to pull him out of that shell. <laughs> John, tell us about Bristol Aircraft. Thank you very much. Uh, Bristol Aircraft's been around for a little longer than nine years now. Uh, it's an aircraft out of the Czech Republic. Mm -hmm. The uh, aircraft is uh, got more real estate in there than uh, a Cirrus. So you got the largest LSA in category, 51-inch mm -hmm. wide cabin, uh, very comfortable. It does cruise at the 120 top of the LSA category. And I, it's I got, understood it was 119. No, 119, just under. Okay. Just, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Just, just tripping you up. Yeah, thank you very much. No, no. It, uh, the, the airplane uh, really does perform to all the specifications. has a great useful load. It's lighter, faster, and stronger than some of the other competitors. And it was a uh, from the ground rebuild when our our uh, Bristel, uh, Milan Bristella, at BRM Aero came back out and rebuilt the airplane from the from the ground up from the original design. Mm. So now we're offering several different engine uh, capabilities with the, ro the various Rotaxes, 912, 912 IS, 914, we'll get into some of this stuff, and then uh, down the road we're going to hint at the idea the 915 Ooh, might be usable that's, too. That's exciting. Yeah. And this is an all-metal aircraft. That's correct. And uh, suspension, do we have any B-roll on this? I don't know if we do. Uh, Evidently not. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't, know, if we, I don't nice. know if we have anything to go to. Because uh, you know what I really love to do is I tease people. And uh, and it, I, I like to say... You want a fun teaser? How about let, let's go over to uh, face, uh, let's go over to um, uh, YouTube and look at Bristel in the Sky. Okay, if, if I was in front of a machine or if I had my PDA up, I would go to... Bristel in the Sky. Bristel in the Sky. Yeah. Hit go. And, uh, you've Over seen on what YouTube, Wendy's. and you'll see a really uh, a fun flying trip we did with with my partner, uh, Lou Mancuso. I've heard of Lou. And Lou's a super great guy. He's been in the industry since uh, was well, family's been in the industry since the '40s. Lou's had a 75-year business uh, in aviation. Good. His dad was or his, his dad was a, a trainer for the guys who flew uh, Battle of Britain. Mm. So before America was in the war, his dad was a, was a flight instructor for that. Lou's been in instructing. His life passion is to enhance a personal limitations checklist and have a training program for our plane. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a transition program that's, I think, second to none. His his son also came up in the business and was an aerobatic pilot, as you know. Mike mm -hmm. Mancuso flew with the uh, with the Snowbirds. Yep, I, I've heard the name Mike. Or I Mancuso. should say the Northern Lights, the Northern extension Lights, the yeah. extension of the so Snowbirds when they got done. Yeah. The uh, you know it's good to hear heritage and and how. Uh, and how we have, well, folks that pass it down from generation sure. to generation. And it, since the industry is growing so much, some of our uh, founders and the folks that have been in the grassroots are, we're, we're, we're getting diluted, John. It's hard to find those anchors. We used to be, you know, you used to be a young guy in aviation. That's, that's true, sorry. That's <laughs> right. yeah. I, I used to be a young guy. <laughs> and then I woke up one day and it was, it was all gray and, Missing and fat, but uh, but we we gotta make this industry more attractive for young sure. folks. Like Christel, uh, I know that you guys are very very enthusiastic about getting young people around your oh, aircraft. Yeah. yeah. And when I say young people, that's anything under forty. That's right. Okay. That's right. And uh, what uh, training? You you just touched on training. Yeah. And I haven't heard of any real accidents or incidents uh, right well the, the airplane uh the airplane has a really good accident record uh the the uh 
the, the, the thing is, it's extremely safe. It's got a very uh, heavily reinforced roll cage mm -hmm. inside. It's got some special design requirements that uh, early on in the design uh, of this aircraft, the, the designer Milan Bracella built a special channel that in the event there's a head-on or front-down impact, mm -hmm. that the, the engine will fold and pull back up under the roll cage inside the airplane. So if, if there were a forward head-on crash, that that engine will fold up underneath in a channel, taking that energy away from the pilot. Not in your lap. Exactly right. Oh, okay. Not in your lap, in your face, on your, on your, yeah. you know. So we're not looking at what a, we know some of the other aircraft out there that, that maybe on the composite side of the world that are a little stubby, maybe also a little hard to work on mm -hmm. than, mm -hmm. than you would others, otherwise see. Mm -hmm. When you open up our canopy and cowling in there, couple, it's one of the mm -hmm. quickest ways to get inside, but when you take, four or five minutes to open up the cowling and to take front and top cowling off, you can see there's plenty of room to work with. Hmm. That is a really great opportunity in a, an unfortunate situation that, that that whole all that equipment's gonna move away mm -hmm. from the pilot, but there's plenty of space for it to absorb some of that energy. John, so there's some cool design features built in. It's refreshing to hear a manufacturer rep uh, talk about some of the dark side of aviation. Because everybody, nobody, don't, don't, say anything, don't say anything about the accident. No, that's, that's bad. That's bad. Uh, bad advertising. Sure. No, it's reality, it's and reality. and uh, it is a direct result of poor training, poor preparation, and just lack of skill. Sure. <laughs> and so. Well, we, and when we, all that fails, we sure would like the design to kick in and protect the pilot. Crashworthiness. I mean, look at what they've done, and uh, I, I I mentioned NASCAR yeah. just because I mean they're going 200 miles an hour. And they can flip, roll, and crash, and get up and walk out of it. You bet. Now, granted, they don't have some of the weight constraints that we do in aviation. Right. But still, they're very, very weight conscious. Right. So uh, there's, there's, there's got to be more that we can do in this industry to make something to where you can, uh, you can uh, have an occurrence, let's yeah. call it. Sure. And well, and and literally not take your life or lose sure. uh, limbs. So. Sure. What's great about this airplane is it's a great all-rounder. So it lands relatively slow, mm -hmm. and as we say in the industry, it's a bit of a baby carriage. So it's very stable, mm -hmm. very controllable. Ailerons are controllable all the way throughout the landing process. So it's not, as we know, that the flight controls begin to degrade as we begin to slow down the airplane. Mm -hmm. Normally in the normal flight, if you're a student, you'll soon learn that. But this airplane handles and has full aileron control all the way up through the regime, all the way down through the stall. So, and it's very, very benign, so the airplane can land very slowly, but it gets up and on speed very quickly. So when you're gonna make a long distance or a cross country, it's mm -hmm. economical, and it covers a lot of the bases that larger Americans might wanna have, a lot of space in there. Hey, hey careful, <laughs> careful, careful there, <laughs> careful. I, I recommend a good workout program. We start <laughs> every morning, 5 a.m. We, uh, I have not flown in the Bristow. Uh, but the ground handling you mentioned, is it direct link steerage? Yes, yeah, so it's, it's steerable it, nose wheel, that's correct. It's steerable nose wheel yeah. with rudders. That's right. So we're not using this differential brake. That's or, correct. Uh, okay. So if you do have a problem with a brake line and you land, we've used Behringer brakes, by the way, one of the few airplanes out here that has uh, analog braking system. Mm -hmm. So you get the increased functionality to ABS, but it's mm -hmm. something you're more familiar with in your car. Mm -hmm. It's something you've got, most, most folks have now mm -hmm. in, a, in a newer vehicle. So this airplane has increased performance. We have great brake manufacturers out there, and we've been thrilled to be working with a lot of them. But now we're working with Behringer, uh, largely in our aircraft, and we really love it. You know. How about your? Uh, how about the fan? What kind of fans? Is it well, we've got um, a uh, uh, a fifty prop that comes with it. It's a Czech manufacturer. Mm -hmm. We've had really good results with it, and we got lots of long-term data on it. We're also working with Duke props out of France fascinating prop almost behaves like a variable pitch prop mm -hmm. but it is fixed so it, it it has an enhanced capability at takeoff and as you get into the cruise mode the uh the the, the uh thrust advances out the out the edge of the blade to further out the blade so interestingly it behaves like a variable pitch prop interesting really cool and uh the czech republic there's a lot of designs that come out of the czech republic oh yeah uh, the, uh, the you, gosh, I won't go into all the various different aircraft that look similar, but they're very. The only thing similar is wing position, yeah. uh, 
maybe a canopy. Yeah. The uh, the the rake on the tail. Yeah. It might look uh, amazingly. Yeah. Alike. Well, but, there were uh, a lot of earlier designs, and interestingly, our designer has been involved in some other check check built aircraft mm -hmm. early on. So mm -hmm. you'll see some of the DNA, some of the threads of where he kind of started in his business, and then worked his way out to being on his own at at, at uh, BRM Aero. They doubled wow. produ production for us twice last year. They increased factory production for us again uh, this year again. Where is the thrust of your sales, John? Uh, uh, but percentage wise, it, really? You mean in terms of uh, Australia? Uh, oh, uh, well, China's starting to it, open up it, some airspace. The United States is has become the, the biggest uh, dealer. Uh, okay. We started out as uh, number three in line and worked our way up to number one now. Uh, Australia has been a real strong player, also Germany mm -hmm. and France. And our, our, our partners there, we're, what we're trying to do in, in the Bristol line, and Lou and I have worked pretty hard, mm -hmm. uh, we like to be leaders and, and we behave like we could be global leaders. Mm -hmm. And so the other dealers will be going to Friedrichshafen, the Aero Friedrichshafen uh, in well, this next well, that'll uh, be couple a, that'll weeks. That'll be a welcome, a, a very light aircraft. That's that, yeah, yeah. Uh, so when, when we get over there to see those guys, we'll be having a dealership meeting with all the guys, mm -hmm. and we'd like to show them what we're doing here in the States because we've begun to outpace the other dealers, and the American market has really kicked off. If, if I was wanting to go to see either uh, a large dis dealer, uh, distributor, yeah. uh, what is your marketing, wh where is it? Where's it where's Lan your Lancaster, Pennsylvania. It is in Lancaster. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We have a facility there that's dedicated to the Bristol. We have a flight school there as well as our sales import hub. So when we bring in the aircraft, that's where they come into. We, we work all our sales and support out of that location. Wow. Some of the best cheese and butter in the world <laughs> up in Lancaster, if you hadn't been there. Uh, it's pretty Amish, special. Uh, Amish country, gorgeous. Is, and, uh, Worth very, a trip. Very hard working people. Yeah. Hard working people in Lancaster. Yeah. What took you to Lancaster? I'm just kind of curious. Oh, for myself? No, I mean for, for the company. For the company. Well, uh, I, I've been located there for about 25 years and had a, we have a, a flight school business. We have uh, mm -hmm. one of our uh, dealers for down here in Florida is a guy named uh, John Callum. Mm -hmm. And John has been with the industry for more than 15 years now. He's a super great guy, well known in the industry. He moved down to Florida and I took over the flight school piece of the business up there mm -hmm. in, in Lancaster. So we located our import business around that, that flight school so we can tightly control the transition program between folks buying the airplanes and then working their way back into, into uh, taking the airplane home. John, I, I hesitate to get into this, and I probably shouldn't, but because it's usually pretty sensitive. Yeah. Um, Hope you don't mind. I don't know where you're going. Well, okay. uh, typically the light sport uh, industry, yeah, it really didn't take off like they had hoped that it would, and right. sales usually is kind of kind of down. Prices are up, and right. you know, I just how are your sales, John? Our sales are doing really well. Okay. Yeah, we're having a banner year. Everything's going extremely well. We're w way ahead of the curve. That's remarkable. Well, yeah, and our and our model is to sell. A, about 25 airplanes a year were way ahead of pace. We sold four at Sebring Show. Um, it went very well. We're at about nine now. Looks like about eight or nine guys coming on board very soon, maybe by or close to the end of this show. At this show? Yeah, we're looking at, at a very, very robust year. Yeah. Wow. 25 a year. And, you know, there's some folks that aren't familiar with aircraft production that think, 25, is that all? 25? That's a lot of airplanes. Yeah. I mean, in today's world and market. Right. Uh, I worked at Piper when we were putting out 16 a day. Wow. <laughs> That's back in the heyday. Wow. In the 70s. I just gave my age away, didn't I? Damn it. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, th we're not going to see that again. No. I doubt it. But no. But it, I would be happy with uh, 25 or 30 a year. Yeah. That's two or three a month. Yeah. That's 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 a good seeding it, of well, the well our philosophy and our philosophy from the factory side has always been to do a long steady slow grow mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of examples of companies that have gone forward bankrupted or or gone out of business there's a long history it's hard to remember the one that hasn't including Piper and oh, Cessna yeah? and everybody's had some variation of that theme so we've been try to be very careful and we work very closely with the factory mm -hmm. and we're looking at a very long steady slow grow and so so for the folks that aren't so familiar with those numbers 
this is a very, very patient mm -hmm. uh, plan. Mm -hmm. It's not one where we're trying to hit the market and, or, and, and, and literally and flood. Do huge, yeah. huge volumes. It's not helpful. No. The, the correct way to do it is to make customers ecstatically happy and keep them happy and give them great support. Mm -hmm. So what that does is it takes guys who are on the the low end of the of the scale mm -hmm. buying airplanes, and they're often buying some of these used airplanes, and they're just sort of looking for a sort of a deal, low cost way of doing it. And that's, I think, what you're referring to when you say, is this sensitive about the light sport industry? Yeah. I thought it was supposed to be cheap. No, no. people are cheap, airplanes aren't cheap. <laughs> no, people, any, any way you cut it, yeah. it, it, it you're right. Yeah. I, I, and uh, it, it really bothers me when I hear somebody say, well, I really can't afford to take flight training and I can't afford an airplane. Right. Well, have you ever looked into it? Right. What, what's your motivation? Right. And uh, they can, if there, there's a will, there's a way. I right. still firmly believe that. But, and uh, how do you reach out? Uh, what is your strongest marketing approach for the aircraft? Well, so far we've had a really good presence online. And so our online uh, approach has been really dynamite. We've had great uh, reach and frequency mm -hmm. through that piece. And a lot of times the folks are sort of coming to us from a different aircraft. For instance, uh, our most recent buyer has a Phenom. Mm. And when he discovers this airplane, he says, you know, this is a little all-arounder I want to go take to a pancake breakfast, fly into a grass field, mm -hmm. and they'll also go on a trip to, let's say, from the northeast down to Alabama. Mm. That This airplane can do it. Mm. This airplane is a really great all-arounder. So whenever you find an airplane, if you think of it in terms of, let's say, a, a Piper Cub, that airplane's an all-arounder in a lot of different ways, mm -hmm. right? So when you find a light sport plane, they're a little less married to this is supposed to be, let's say, light sport. They look at an airplane that they're looking for that matches a real all-arounder. It covers everything. Mm -hmm. By by the way, it's very seems a lot like a Cirrus. It has a, a very advanced Garmin-centered cockpit mm -hmm. with a fantastic um, autopilot system. We have a BRS system. We can have everything loaded in this airplane, mm. still have a nice useful load and go on a nice long trip. When we start talking about those kind of items, mm -hmm. we look at pricing is not so sensitive because they want the airplane that's brand new. Mm -hmm. A lot of what our customers have is brand new and they haven't had anything used or older for a long time. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go back to 1970, 1960 and having an airplane. A great airplane is a Rockwell Commander, really cool thing, but is it really supported? Where, where does that support come from? How, uh, not mm -hmm. to pick on a Rockwell Commander, but there's a whole lot of airplanes that are well, great old airplanes, but they're not new. They're not in production anymore. Exactly. Uh, finding parts can be a challenge. Right. When you do find the parts, it's, as right. we say, they're not cheap. Right. Uh, ADSB, what's that, uh, how's that affecting your... Uh, not at all. I had a guy ask me yesterday the same thing with uh, ADSB hasn't affected us at all. Our airplanes all fully ADSB compliant. We also have folks that are saying, hey, uh, how do you feel about this medical issue? Has uh, basic med... I said, no, we doubled sales. I'm mm -hmm. not really worried about basic mm -hmm. med. Our guys aren't really concerned about... Our mm -hmm. guys and gals are not concerned about that. Mm -hmm. That's not a real issue. It's about the fact that the airplane meets mission. And, you know, after after a lot of... More than a couple years in the industry. I will. <laughs> that was kind. That was kind. The, the, there's a whole yeah. uh, process to this that uh, folks aren't really that concerned uh, about. They want a mission quali mm -hmm. quality plane. So this airplane really covers a lot of that mission. Comfortable, long John, distance. Maintenance. Yes. Uh, do you encourage your folks to get involved with the maintenance aspect of the aircraft? Well, uh, in, on the experimental side of the house, a lot of guys want to get involved. So yeah. you can take a short course and do your own inspections if the airplane is an experimental. Mm -hmm. You can also take a light sport repairman course and do your own inspections as you go forward. But as far as us encouraging it, if you're certified, we encourage it. But most of our airplanes are still in warranty. So if you want to meet the requirements to be certified, mm -hmm. we really highly encourage that. Take a course for Rotax, the, Ro the Rotax engine mm -hmm. at uh, Lockwood or Leaf mm -hmm. or the guys in the, uh, uh, California Power mm -hmm. Systems. Those guys really, we, we encourage you to be qu be qualified and do it yourself. But if you're not a do it yourself or you really don't need to worry about it, an annual on this airplane costs about 800 bucks. Mm -hmm. So you're really not looking at a, a steep cost wow. to have to be able to maintain this airplane. I, 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 I'm an advocate, I'm a mechanic by trade. Yeah. And I always advocate that to, to really thoroughly be a, a really good ultimate pilot, you really need to know the systems on your airplane. 
And, uh, and for the folks that say, well, I'm just not mechanically inclined. Well, you do you have a curiosity? Yeah. Uh, you, can you open a, can you turn a doorknob? Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know how to work a screwdriver? Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. there's a lot of different variations of mechanically inclined, but. Well, our airplane comes with a transition program and that includes a maintenance in brief when you come in. Mm -hmm. We also give you a suggested reading and suggested reviewing to mm -hmm. make sure that you have some, some basic background so we know that you're safe when you, when you take the airplane. Yeah, some do's and don'ts and, right. uh, and look for this. Be careful with that. Right. Don't touch this. So whatever you do, <laughs> whatever you do, yeah. The, whatever you do, don't, don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John, what is, where are you going with this? I mean, I know that, it, of course, increasing sales, but uh, the safety aspect is, that's really what we're here about, is sure. safety. And uh, where are you going with expanding on your safety message mm -hmm. to your potential owners, yeah. potential buyers? Well, one of the fun things, and, and you might be familiar with this, I don't know how, what your military background was or if you had one, but we had a challenge a coin. coin. Have you uh, seen our little challenge coin? We're going, well, we're going I, drinking. I brought, yeah. <laughs> <that's right. laughs> well, the first thing about military flying is, of course, that it's all work when you're at work, and mm -hmm. it's a little bit of play when you're done. And, and it's usually high pressure early on, and then it's, there's a relaxation. When that comes, there's a, usually a mil military challenge coin. So our military challenge coin, one of the few, I don't know that there's another plane out here that has one, but it, it says on the front here, the art of defying gravity for Bristol and on the back, mm -hmm. it memorializes our training program. Okay. So after you've completed our training program, you get a little call sign, just like you would in the military. Yeah. So our most recent guy to get one is Michael Smith out in uh, Texas. And we have decided to call him Fabio for Febreze. We won't tell you why he's he's Febreze, but he is Long now Fabio. Long flowing hair? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> not. Not so much. More like Febreze. That, uh, we're gonna the challenge to our guys out in the uh, out in the truck. They're just back there, just probably asleep by now. John saying, "Oh, now, now, what's Ben doing now? Oh my God! I, come on, come on, you can do it! Oh, it's right over them. Uh, there you go. Let me cover my pie hole here. <laughs> uh, but let's see a little. Can you see that? Oh, righty then. Challenge coin, and yeah. that's that's an excellent concept. And, uh, and on the back, if I can, I, can I get that shot too? Let's come on, let's do it again. Do that, do that one on the back. John's saying, "Oh, what's he doing now to us?" There you go. Okay. You'll, you'll see that it memorializes our training program, and it says GPA. And, and right here is what's going to be engraved for yeah, the call. Yeah, that's right for the call sign. Excellent. Right. That is excellent. Very good. So, so my partner Lou wrote a book called um, The Personal Limitations Checklist, and, uh, and basically based on a, the fact that a man has to know his limitations, right? Mm -hmm. Well, or a person has to know the limitations from Dirty Harry. Wim man, wim women know their every, limitations. Too. Uh, <laughs> women yeah. know men are their limitations. That's, Dur that, Dirty that, Harry. I, that, exa that, but man's got to know his limitations. Exactly. So Lou wrote a, a little uh, a primer on basic limitations. So we include that with our training program. We've also got ground proximity awareness training, which is an interesting part that's memorialized mm -hmm. here. And then on the other side, a defined go around point. A lot of the stuff matches the PTS, if you're mm -hmm. familiar with it. Practical, now it's ACS, uh, practical test standards yeah, now moved right. over to ACS, right? Yeah. So so when, when this it gets instituted, what we're looking at is continuing to deepen those roots on that, that three-legged training program. Mm -hmm. So we talk about things that have happened in the past, what we can do to avoid them, mm -hmm. just like we would do at an airline mm -hmm. or an airline training. Then ground proximity awareness, how to fly low and close to the low and close to the ground safely. Mm -hmm. And then define go around points where everything's a go around unless you can't think of a good reason not to touch it down smoothly on the center line mm -hmm. with uh, no side drift mm -hmm. and any kind of crosswind. John, that, that fits in remarkably with something that I was going to challenge you with. Oh, yeah. I don't have my coin with me, but... You now do. Oh, and so are you serious? That's your coin. Th yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I spent some time in the sandbox, and uh, <laughs> my call is milk jug. Is that right? So uh, I'll explain that to you off camera, because okay. uh, it's a little bit too colorful for this crowd. Okay. Uh, but, well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Uh, but, but I'll expect to see you the next time we see each other in a social arrangement. And there could be a cold Coca-Cola involved. If you throw that up on the bar, I'll have mine. But if you don't have yours, you're buying. There, there, there might be something. Uh, there might be something to that. Yes. Hang in there. <laughs> uh, but the challenge that I'm going to throw at you, I don't yeah. have my coin. But yeah. thank you again. Yeah. Uh, you're welcome. I've, I've. This is a. This is one of my 
fetishes, if you will. That, that's, I don't have any real fetishes, but uh, landing checklist. Yes. Why don't we call that a go-around checklist? Sure, it should be a go-around checklist. It's, it's a go-around checklist. If you can't think of any other reason not to land, then you can land. We, uh, we have had so many loss control incidents and occurrences, and in some cases, pretty bad accidents, with people that uh, they're gonna land. And in their mind, from downwind, they're gonna land. Can I, can I give you a concept that might Talk be interesting, especially from a safety standpoint? Yeah. Isn't, it, isn't landing or pushing or salvaging a landing, if I always use these phrases, if we're salvaging a landing, mm -hmm. you think, well, well, we can salvage this. When you hear that, that's a big <laughs> red flag. Let's not salvage anything, mm. right? So if you're trying to salvage a landing or save something, that's a good clue to be begin to think mm -hmm. about, go around it, and make sure that you don't do something that's not safe. Landing incorrectly or push pushing the landing puts us in a position to have, almost get have get home itis mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. way. You know, we yeah. talk about get home itis. Let's not push it into weather. No, I don't want to be unsafe. I don't want to go to somewhere where the weather isn't so good. I know I don't want to do it, but I gotta kind of get back for that meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're gonna land and the stabilized approach has evaporated. Yeah. And it's not looking so good. And we start thinking about maybe salvaging this one. Isn't this just a form of <laughs> get home itis or maybe get down itis? It, it is, it yeah. is. And that's that's the reason that I'm I'm, I'm trying to push the industry. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just one little bitty fella. But now there's two big fellas yeah. <laughs> uh, that can talk about this concept of plan on going around. Uh, land only if everything is stabilized right. and you're exactly where you want to be on target, right. on speed, ref speeds. Uh, Let's talk ref speeds on the next interview. Let's do that. John, thank you so much thank for your you so time. Much. Appreciate it. And uh, I do want to come out and fly that airplane someday. Please do. All right. And then we'll put you in a Mahindra Air Van someday. I would love that. And uh, that's a real hoot. Let's we'll do talk it. about that one some other time. But we're going to sign off on this interview and we're going to, uh, we've got so much more coming to you. And if you're watching the streaming live, Excellent. Hit the uh, hit the record button. Have uh, have mom and the kids come in and uh, watch us all day. We'll be here till about mm, two o'clock or so, and then we might see a little air show from Live Air Show TV. That's a pitch. Take care, guys. Ben Coleman with uh, Florida Aviation Network. Talk to you next interview.